Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek and today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to fix a specific issue. And that is when you have a device doing something like this, where if you bend the cord at the right angle, it charges, goes back to a natural position, and it stops charging. It has to continually be propped up to get it to charge. So let's get started. We're going to start with turning it off real quick. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to show you a trick on how to open an iPad without heat. Just in case you ever run into the circumstance where your heat pad isn't working or you don't have a heat gun. I'm just going to take some tape and I'm going to tape along the border of each side, trying not to get any bubbles in the tape. Next, I'm going to take my ice slack and we're going to stick it on down. And then I can do a little bit of clamping. And with a little bit of tension, what will start to happen is the side will start to separate. As you can see, the adhesive starting to pop up right there. And then I'm just going to take this thin piece of plastic and I'm just going to cut into the adhesive with it. And once you've got the plastic piece inside, you can then kind of relieve that. You might go back to it, but now I can just take the plastic and slide up the side, just like that. And I'll go back the other way, slide, 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 slide. Now this entire side, if I wanted to grab it and lift, you can see it's coming away nicely. I'm just gonna continue using the plastic all the way around the corner. The corners are always the trickiest, but with enough patience, you'll get through. And then we can slide on down here at the top of the iPad. And some of you might be thinking, hey, why not add some isopropyl alcohol? And you could totally do that. The only issue is, is you're working with a display that has a backlight. And if the alcohol somehow manages to touch the backlight and get inside of it, it's going to create watermarks. And uh, it's just, even though I can replace the backlight on these displays, I'd rather not. So that's why I'm not using any alcohol to help slide the plastic. All right, I'll work my way around the top and we'll come to the corner. Another spot where you're going to have to put in a little bit more effort. We'll work our way around it, just wiggling back and forth, and then it'll cut through the adhesive. And now we can work our way down the side. Sides are a lot easier because there's less adhesive. And then I'll just slide down the side. When I get down to the bottom, because we've now released three of the four sides, you'll see that it'll want to hinge away. And this hinging is nice because it allows me to see physically see the adhesive I still need to cut through and it makes it a lot easier to cut the bottom section here. The corners are always the most difficult but with a little bit of wiggle we'll get right through it just like that and then I'll work my way down all the way over to the other side. I can definitely tell that I'm the first one in this iPad which is nice. Cut the last corner there and now we can gently fold back the display. I'm going to go ahead and take out the two screws and take off the shield that cover up the display connectors and we'll go ahead and pop all four of those connectors off. And there is the screen off. And this technique's work and this technique works for all of the iPads. It's not the easiest thing to do, but if you don't have a heat map, it's still doable as I've just demonstrated. So here's a little test we can perform. If we take this and we stick it in, what will happen is it'll run a test and it'll come back with OLs. And if I jiggle this around, it's actually going to start testing again because it thinks I plugged in it again. And if I lever leverage it a little bit, like I would the cable, everything comes back as uh, working. So I know that I can just go about fixing the pins itself instead of replacing everything. Now it's time to go and take a look at the charge port, and I'm going to show you how we fix it. We're going to do this under a microscope. All right, so right here, we've got the charge port, and it's kind of hard to see this angle but what we have is these pins down there that have become detached there's a little bit of clear coating that's covering them so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to gently pick at that clear coat now there's basically three ways to fix this type of issue one is to replace just the charge port itself Two, replace the charge port and its little flux that is soldered under the logic board here very short little flex or three is tack these little pins that are down and under the port. All right, I'm gonna just brush out all of the little 
debris that I've been able to scrape out. And what you can see is we're left with the solder joints. And what's happened is the pins have broken away from the, the solder in certain areas as to when the charge port is plugged in. It no longer has continuity in certain positions. So all I'm gonna do now is we're gonna take some flux and we're gonna pipe it down inside there. I'm gonna take a soldering iron and all I have to do is go down in there and touch each one of the pins and melt the solder again. And because this is still inside the frame, there's a lot of thermal mass that's gonna be pulling away heat. So you may have to leave the soldering iron on the pads and pin longer than you would if you took the motherboard out, for example. You can even add, if you're careful, uh, extra solder to each one of these pads. You just have to be careful not to bridge them. Now we're going to take some isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to brush out off the flux and then I'm going to take a wipe. This is a cleaner and wipe with some isopropyl alcohol. And we'll get rid of all of the residue. Now I think I know why this one broke in the first place is because if you look very carefully, sorry for the shakiness, you'll see that all of the pins are slightly off center this one. They're all soldered now, but the entire charge port is slightly off center. So this one has the tendency to want to break again. Let's check and see if we have any difference now that we've added solder to, you know, I'm going to add some more solder to this. I'm going to start and just do one pin at a time. Added a little solder paste there. I'll add some flux. It's going to really help keep everything liquid and in the right spot. So I'll add some more solder paste to use. And if you're wondering, this is a 183 solder paste, which is definitely stronger than a 138. We'll clean it up again. And now I'm much more comfortable. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a quite a bit more solder in each one of those pins connecting to the, uh, the pads. So we're going to go test it, and then I'll show you the next step. All right, let's test and see what it thinks now. Go ahead and turn it on. We run the test, and you can see we now have solid green everywhere. And if I move it, it doesn't automatically start testing again like it was before. So that's fixed. Now we just are going to take some glue. Doesn't need to be anything really in particular. You can use hot glue. You could use uh, cold press adhesive. Really anything that's just gonna give it some type of resistance to oxidation and somewhat of a movement. So put enough little glue there that it's more than the factory put. Now before we test this, we're gonna isolate the battery. I'm not about to damage the backlight or touch. And take some isopropyl alcohol under the board here just to give it something to help loosen the adhesive. Gently get under the board there and lift it up enough to where we're not putting too much tension on it when I slide it into the plastic here. Now we can reconnect the display. This one's always tricky. I always like to tighten those two screws just with the attachment or just with the bit itself just because of the angle and then we'll angle this out to the side there giving us access the battery screw. So we'll screw that in, line up the screen. Oh, and another reason I like to use no alcohol along the border is it saves all of the original adhesive. And if, as long as you don't damage it, if you notice I didn't damage the adhesive, it's uh, good enough. And this is for one of my kids. So I'm not too concerned about it because I'm going to be putting a case on and things like that. So even if the adhesive was a little weaker than original, it's still better than I think the uh, aftermarket adhesive. So for the moment of truth, let's go ahead and plug it in. Got the Apple logo. And what we're going to be looking for is any issues with the charging, obviously. Okay, now it says we're charging. If I wiggle it, no matter how much I wiggle it, it never pops off the not charging symbol. So this one is all fixed. All right, so there we go. We finally got it to the point where moving around the cable and it never stops charging, it's solid. So this is one of those repairs that's just pure labor. There's no parts involved. You do have to have the right tools, of course, the soldering iron, maybe some solder and flux, but the majority of the time, that's all it is. And the same goes for a lot of other devices like some iPhones. A lot of the iPads, unless they're a double road pin set, you can do this way. And there's some techniques that even if they are double road, to fix them without actually replacing them. So let me know in the comments below what you think. If there's something that you'd like to see in a future video, let me know as well. If you're gaining any insight, feel free to like the video. 
Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.